This is the inside story of the rebirth of an icon, the Ford Focus RS. From the design studio to the test track and from Arizona to the Arctic, we follow the team as they strive to revive a famous name. We are not going to put out a vehicle that doesn't deserve that RS badge. And we'll follow Ford Rally and Jim Carner superstar Ken Block as he joins the RS team. Ken and Ford's product development chief Raj Nair are in a top secret test facility at Ford's global headquarters in Dearborn, Michigan. They're here to drive an early prototype of the new Ford Focus RS. Every Ford we try to make sure is a fun to drive vehicle, but we take that a step up with the Focus ST, and the RS is, you know, really the top of that pyramid. All my development work with cars has all been race cars, but to actually be now working on an actual production car is really, really cool. It's stuff that I dreamed of as a kid when I studied, you know, car design. When they confirmed for me the horsepower and the fact that they would make it all-wheel drive, it really was a cool moment. If you look back at the history, vehicle prior to Focus, the Escort, and even before that, the Sierra, we had all-wheel drive on the RS. And the, the RS front wheel drive. And the RS200, yeah, and even <laughs> before that. Yeah. That's a rare one right there. Yeah. Great car. When we got to a certain point where, even though the Revo knuckle on the front wheel drive was really good, the horsepower levels that we're at right now, we really felt that we were gonna need to channel that through all-wheel drive and... You need to get the car down the road quicker and better than a front wheel drive right. car can. Ever since the first Escort RS1600 of 1970, the RS brand has been synonymous with high-performance Fords from Europe, including such icons as the RS200 and the Escort RS Cosworth. The Focus RS was born on the rally stage in the hands of such greats as Carlos Sainz and Colin McRae. The first Focus RS road car appeared in 2002 and the second in 2009. The new model will be the first to be sold globally, including here in Motor City, Detroit, USA. It's a symbol of our company's heritage. It symbolizes that kind of performance, that all-wheel drive vehicle that I think we popularized in Europe, and now it's exciting to be able to sell that here in the US. It's sort of the next chapter of performance. It's the next chapter of innovation. A mile away at the test track, Ken and Raj are preparing for their first drive of the new prototype. Who picks the camos? Oh, we got various ones. We got flowers and waves and zebra stripes <laughs> and whatever the guys feel like putting on. Play cat and mouse games with all photographers that hang out outside the wall. Sometimes climb the wall. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. We see them in trees over here by Greenfield Village. And wow. They've been starting to fly drones. So I'm really? Not, I'm not you know sure what we're going to do about that. Thankfully, some drones have been given permission. Every time I get in a race car, we're so focused on such a particular driving style, on particular courses, where, you know, most drivers drive with a certain ability. I'm talking about a production car, something that may work for me around this track may not work for your average driver. We want the car to reward expert drivers like you, right? But we also want it to flatter the novice. And to some extent, we want people to get out of this car and, and to think they're a better driver than they probably actually are. <laughs> so that's a big part of the goal of the car. It's Ken's turn to drive, and he reminisces about life with a second generation Focus RS. Part of my original deal with Ford was that I liked that car so much that I requested that in my original contract when I signed with Ford that I wanted one of those cars brought over as a daily driver for me. They happily obliged and brought one over for a couple years for me as a loaner and I got to drive it around, kept it at my home in Southern California and really enjoyed that car. You know, when I was based in Europe, I actually had a Escort RS Cosworth as my company car. We were supposed to turn them in after a year, but I never turned mine in, so they kept calling up asking where it was and I said I was still using it. <laughs> And it was one of those that I really wish we had had that car in the U.S. I've been a car guy since I was a young kid, and now to, to be a professional race car driver and be able to interact on this sort of level is an absolute dream come true for me. I mean, 
mean, it already feels quite nice. I'm not pushing it past the point of understeer. I'm really letting it do what it wants to do, but it already feels quite nice. I mean, overall, it's doing what we wanted to do, getting out of these tight corners fairly quickly. That corner is visually weird. Yeah. What the car wants to do with the line is slightly different than what it looks like it should want to do. Yeah, right now the car almost feels like it's a little bit better settled at nine tenths than it is at eight tenths. Mm -hmm. Being in this car and being able to test drive it around a very fun test track here in Michigan is amazing. Next time, we're in Germany for a lesson in design. You're all very excited if we have an RS. And a crash course in safety. Today we will do a Ford Focus RS. Bang, cars crashed. <laughs> <laughs>